Okay. Uh, so we have now something like four persons. Uh, I would like uh, to start just with some organizational preaching. Um, I think that it is a good thing to keep these uh, sessions, uh, uh, these sessions actually 30 minutes uh, long, strictly, because not uh, everyone is uh, able to, uh, to be with us for one hour or more. Um, all sessions are going to be recorded, uh, recorded so it will be no uh, missing information. Um, between different sessions so that everyone uh, will have uh, access to everything that uh, will have uh, been said. Um, if, you, uh, if some of you are new or, or on this team or uh, there are some general questions about things that, are already, uh, that have been already discussed, uh, the best way is to ask about, uh, to ask about them on Slack, because uh, otherwise uh, I don't like to ask uh, Slava or Brandon to explain uh, certain definitions or uh, things that are already have been uh, deeply uh, discussed, discussed, disputed, and and um, and explained to each other in this group. Uh, in this way, we can uh, we could uh, lose a lot of time just explaining once again what we mean by semantics, what we mean by uh, elastic set, etc. So the best way to uh, ask for uh, some uh, detailed uh, information on uh, sorry, new persons are coming uh, on yeah, new like on a certain concepts is Slack and Trello. Uh, and of course, if you need uh, some uh, reserved time slot on this session, next time, uh, next week, etc., et you can uh, ask me on time, like prior to, to the session, so that I can uh, make up a place for you on the schedule. Uh, five or ten minutes, depending on your needs, uh, when something uh, must be discussed uh, uh, in uh, in in such a conversation because of course we can um, uh, discuss things on slack but uh it would be also good when the thing you want to uh talk about um would would uh, have been mentioned somehow in in, in slack because that that makes clear uh, to everyone uh, what what about what precise we are going to talk and yeah that's that's all about uh, organizational things uh, it's already our fourth meeting so uh, john any person is coming sorry but uh, multitasking is not my thing uh, so it's everything about um uh, organizational i think it's more or less clear it's a bit harsh but otherwise we were not be able to cope with uh, our topic uh, just in 30 minutes so i think that's that makes sense to everyone. So I'm following you now more or less uh, the initial uh, agenda of our meeting. We have actually two pipeline draft. I share with you mine. Uh, you have uh, those links uh, in uh, invitation. Uh, my question is, do, uh, are we going to have two this pipeline design draft or do we want to have one? So yeah, there should be one. Right? Yeah, I, I agree that there should one. be one. Um, yeah. The document that I created, I would say, is a vision document rather than a uh -huh. you know actual technical spec. Um, so uh, definitely, you know, think that we should flesh out the B document. Uh, B. So, so the first one, this smaller one, because this it was actually the, the or, let's say original one I created yesterday after our session. But actually, overnight I had not much uh, opportunity to fill in something meaningful. Uh, so I think we can keep with you because John, it's yours. John. Yep, sorry, I muted myself. Uh, yeah, the, uh, I would go with the smaller document and make it more technical. Um, you know, what is the minimum viable product? Um, the document I created is more of a way for the non-technical people to congregate around the vision. Um, and okay. So, yeah. so I should uh, should I keep it? 
Uh, what do you mean keep it? I mean, I know, but because we are going to have one document, that's one created by you, right? <laughs> uh, no. So from the technical perspective, a we should build a design document, which you know is your document. Okay. Um, that. And the other document should still exist for the less technical people to okay. understand the vision. Because honestly, it's it's quite long. I mean, like uh, it's already a lot of technical things inside. I mean, not much technical, but still, it's uh, elaborated much, in my opinion. Like um, five, it's it's five pages long. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've I've worked with technical specs that are thirty-five pages long, so it okay, seems no, no, it's okay. Uh, so okay, uh, for no, now, look, look, Lucas, uh, why do you think, think it ba it's bad? It's not bad. It's just a no, big. No, I mean, to keep two documents. No, it's not bad. Okay, it's not, not. It's also an option. My question was, do we want to have two documents? No, but, but we, uh, obviously there are different documents. So first document that uh, John wrote is about uh, common vision. So we, we should find some common vision at least. And uh, what you are going to do is something different with uh, product specifications. So it's uh, more technical. I would say like, let's create a Google Drive and put uh, both documents and probably we'll produce even more. Okay, so I'm going to keep uh this uh, this old one and i'm going to work on it um, basing on that way what, what uh, is being uh, discussed here and on slack okay cool that's i wanted to have it clear cool so it's it's clear um we, uh, just one one uh, idea yeah, just sure. to, to put link uh, to this main document i would say in slack uh, in the description of uh, search engine task. Okay. You yeah. make it fine at all. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Cool. And, cool. and guys, uh, try to keep all of this in that, uh, at least in one folder, so, yeah. you know, information is not being lost. Yeah, thank you, exactly. Imran. Imran, uh, that's, yeah, I, I tried to, uh, like, to move uh, the, this this file from my folder to this one you, you sent me, but it didn't work. Okay, but I, I'm going to figure out, but the, the general idea, we keep everything in one folder, is 100% valid and uh, legitim le legit and, and, and correct. Uh, okay, uh, Imran, uh, we, uh, you, 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 you made a kind of a draft of, uh, of uh, our product, like the visual draft. Uh, I would like to have also this uh, uh, draft uh, on the, this technical document. Uh, so, if you if once i have uh, this this file in your folder or in the folder of search engine uh, google drive uh, could you put it on that document yep the um the diagram is in that same folder as well oh, okay cool uh, yes yeah, so I, I linked it in the slack channel so okay cool, to, uh, cool. Edit. that's because it's it's, it's very helpful uh, for sure for people uh, coming, uh, like for newcomers and uh, general after two weeks, it would be very helpful to have a kind of a graphical overview. Good. Uh, this, uh, okay, this point is done. Okay, uh, Brandon is not uh, among us today. I mean, like not in general, but today. Uh, and uh, we have a new uh, version of data, V8. Uh, it's uh, according to, uh, to Brandon, uh, is, is, it, it has been already uploaded or it, it's going to be uploaded tonight or today, depending on your time zone, uh, on, uh, on the server done by, uh, prepared by Slava. Uh, we need just to validate those data. I mean, just to check out uh, whether it's everything that uh, we wanted to have uh, in terms of description, in terms of columns, etc is as it should be. So if you have uh, some uh, spare time to look at, at those data, so please do it. Uh, I, I would like to just to mention one thing about vectors and elastic search. I, uh, I uh, made just a quick reading of a um, documentation of elastic search on vectors and um, the authors uh, uh, like, 
seem to limit the uh, the maximal size of the vectors to 2048 something like that and when we are going to use uh, vectors from uh, BERT, from uh, large models of BERT, and when we stack vectors one upon, so for instance, sentence vectors with, with um, let's say section, section vectors and, and document vector, then we are going to have something like more than 2000 uh, cells. So just uh, keep in mind that uh, maybe we, we should also use uh, annoy or face uh, next to it uh, next to elastic search in terms of uh, vectors but because i think because it's already because both things uh, are already installed by by slava uh, on on the let's say on the server so it's it shouldn't be a big deal right no no um, you should be able to use it right now yeah, cool. That's just just uh, saying that there's such a remark on on the size of the vectors. So I don't. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will work also with uh, three thousand uh, with the vectors of the size three thousand. But I don't know. Uh, just uh, saying that from mm -hmm. there is such a mention in the documentation. Uh, I think you can just put it into multiple fields as opposed to uh, you know so you could have one field. Per ah, second. okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's that's also a solution. Uh, I mean, but, it's all, it also would be an issue if we have like more than two thousand vectors, or like like a vector shape of more than two thousand. That's a really high amount of dimensions, right? So, ideally, yeah. we shouldn't be reaching that. Yeah, I mean, okay, just just saying. I, I want to just to underline because it's something that I found in the documentation, and uh, I wanted to make clear. Okay, it's something that just to keep in um, in the back of the mind how, how to say it yeah yeah that's yeah. a good catch though thanks for that uh just uh, for any technical reasons when we get some uh some um uh, some let's say bullshit from the uh, from the search machine so that uh, regarding uh, vectors so maybe it's one of the causes that uh, the vectors are too big uh okay so it's it's clear and now we have something like 10 minutes or even more, 15, uh, of questions and answers. So let's say uh, some freedom to express our um, thoughts. I got a question. So uh, you mentioned that, that is there, are there already people working on a publication ranking criteria? Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, we are those other people, I think. Because actually, uh, we are building a kind of search engine, oh. but it's not search engine as such, because already we, like, we, I think we came to conclusion that it's not exactly search engine per se, it's a kind of knowledge discovery uh, machine. And of course, we need to rank when anything that uh, will pop up as results from this machine um, is supposed to be ranked somehow. Uh, so uh, we are going to work on different kind of metrics according to which we are uh, uh, we will be able to rank those results. Uh, and it's not just about uh, ranking of uh, elastic set or uh, similarity between vectors of uh, embeddings, but also uh, we need to take in, into account uh, uh, the feedback from the real users, epidemiologists, uh, vir uh, virusologists, who will judge the results. So uh, as because uh, today we don't have uh, Justin Edda on, uh, on the call, he prepared already some uh, front end and actually it, it would be quite easy to him just to uh, like it, to have a kind of an extra wizard or uh, extra tool to gather uh, um, to gather feedback from the users so we are going to yes mark you wanted to say oh, something yeah um, okay so my question was specifically on just the papers so Yes. I mean, in academia, when you look at, when you do a lit review, you're not going to take information from any random paper that comes out on Google Scholar. You're going to go by uh, where was it published, um, who were the first and last authors and things like that, you know? Yeah. So, so this system, which I mentioned to you earlier, that's just specifically to grade the paper or publication 
before it reaches the um, end user. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if I can speak to this a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, so Mark, I think uh, you know your message in uh, proposal literature reviews uh, definitely were helpful. Um, I think that some of these ideas around you know using H index and uh, journal rankings and things like that are very relevant here. Um, uh, the way to approach this is probably to add those as uh, fields to this Elasticsearch index. Um, I don't know if you're interested in owning that, but certainly the case that like that is a project that someone should be taking on. Um, I think that uh, Mary and some other people in the uh, you know vision document have uh, expressed that you know it might be the case that we want to go beyond just you know number of citations and things like that because of recency and potentially bringing in preprints and things like that. Um, but uh, as a first uh, kind of minimum viable product, uh, bringing in you know citation count and uh, uh, journal reputation and things like that in would be uh, very useful. Um, and I don't think that anybody's been tackling that so far. And guys, do you know what the alt metric is? What, what is no. Can you repeat that again, Slava? Altmetric, it's called. Yeah, uh, I will just uh, send a link. Uh, there is very nice uh, service that actually providing information about every every publication. I will just put in chat, and you can query it, and you can get, for example, uh, citations in um, academia, and also, let's say, on Twitter, social media, this kind of stuff. So, it's very useful. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, I've never seen this. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Yeah. So, so basically, there is API and it's free. Uh, um, it's a little bit limited, so it's not allowed to, I think, to query like uh, more than two times per second or something. So, but yeah, you can try it uh, with publications uh, we have. Um, I got a question for the initial question that Mark posed. Um, Regarding ranking uh, these publications, right? Um, there was an, another discussion a long time ago, and even I was thinking myself that if we do some kind of ranking system, wouldn't that introduce a ton of bias? Like, shouldn't we let the experts themselves uh, decide what's worthwhile looking at and what's not? Um, yeah, to me, it would be, you'd you basically be filtering out to the best 10% or something like that, you know, and it would be, I envision that you can actually tweak this on the front end, uh, depending on who uses it. Um, but, but definitely, I, how, how if you can remove 90% of, sorry? No, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, please go on. Oh, no, yeah, so that's what I meant, like, it's it's more to... To, to sort out the best 10% and then that's what the user sees or the other option is they can tweak those parameters themselves. I mean, what I'd say is that in, you know, any sort of search interface where you're displaying multiple results for a given query, um, it is the case that you're going to have some sort of bias. Um, there is going to be some ordering and, you know, bias is, you know, is something that we should aim to remove. Uh, but uh, if we think about what the actual objective criteria is, um, it should be the case that we're aiming to have the most correct results towards the top. Um, and so uh, if it is the case that, you know, uh, papers that are published in better journals um, or more reputable journals um, more often have uh, more correct information, then we should be taking advantage of that uh, feature space. Um, you know, uh, the fact that it's correlated with our target variable means that we should be using it in some way. Um, obviously, we don't want to over index on it. Um, because it may be the case that there are, you know, papers from, uh, you know, preprints or less uh, famous authors who are, you know, uh, giving very uh, useful information. Um, but uh, we definitely should be at least exploring, uh, including that information. Mm -hmm. And um, I just remembered another thing. Uh, so there is another service called uh, Crossref. Also, we'll put link here. 
and uh, if I remember correctly, guys, uh, they just uh, kind of used uh, Microsoft and uh, Google Scholar, all this kind of stuff. So they collected all metadata and uh, they actually published uh, this corpus. And uh, there is also API, so you can query it and uh, you can get like go back in time for 100 years to find some related literature. And I think it can be also used for this kind of uh, purposes. Just take a look and uh, yeah, it's another option. It's an yeah, in so, the chat uh, now. I think like um, those are these are all like very valid points. Like I guess what I was worried about was like for us to have like as long as the uh, the, the determination of what is the best paper per se is determined by the actual biomedical experts. Right? Like I wouldn't want to say that like just to use like a really simple example. Oh, because um, yeah, cross example of citations, right? Number of citations is not a good indicator of which one's a good paper and which one's not a good paper, right? So, for, as long as we're avoiding that, like, and we're using, you know, reputable journals and how they manage that, then I think that should be fine. Just a quick amount. I think that uh, in terms uh, that uh, Imran has, has a point in the sense that. Uh, we are going to work on very recent data and there are publication uh, one or two or three weeks uh, old, let's say. So they don't have many uh, citation in general. Uh, and uh, maybe in the database are some very old studies from last year or two years ago. And they will have uh, to, they, they will have many citations. But the most recent studies on COVID-19 that are maybe very crucial to uh, certain search queries, uh, they, they can be uh, under-indexed uh, by the fact that they're just not uh, uh, quoted enough. I mean, that's the, maybe, maybe yeah. it's I mean, the case. Time, time needs to be a part of some of this ranking system. Um, whether that's some sort of uh, neighborhood weighting where based in your neighborhood and time, you can un like count citations less if they're older, um, things like yep. that. Uh, there's a lot of different pre-processing that we can explore. Um, it's just a matter of, again, doing a lot of exploratory data analysis to figure out if anything is useful. Um, yep. just, so. Yeah, I think, Imran, that, that, was, what, that was your point, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think I have a question about this. Why uh, are we going to concentrate on publications? I think we should concentrate on data sets that publish these publications because it's much more interesting for us. Um, well, there's also the issue of peer review, right? Yeah, I mean, that's right. We've got a but, mountain but the of data there, but uh, yeah. not yeah, all but, of it is actually, um, you know, some of it could be bullshit. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah, but, but, but look, uh, so uh, we know that probably like, I don't know, 25% of uh, what is written in papers is fake, probably. So <laughs> to be completely sure, we need data. So I think first we should filter out all these uh, papers that probably contain some data somewhere. And it would be nice to collect data in our repositories. Yeah, I agree. That's actually an important point. I just had a call with Rose uh, Glavin, and then she also mentioned that, you know, if, especially for some meta data meta studies, if you have like one study that uses a data set that's flawed or something like that, that then you will affect a lot of study downstream. So I think it would be important and interesting to track those data sets as well. And I think it's it's much more important than uh, page rank that uh, we discussed first. Yeah, that's. I think it's also point. Uh, I, I mean, would, I would say that yeah, that's definitely important. Um, however, we're going beyond the scope of of just large online data sets, right? Like a lot of this data they generated within the labs themselves, and you only, they're not going to share it. And the only way to get the word out is to actually publish the paper. But and we, that we goes a peer review process. And that's why you get some papers being in like journals like Nature and some papers being lower down the rank. So this is but, it's sort of like a big overview to vet all papers. You know what I mean? 
uh, which is exactly my point, how you can trust uh, their results if you don't have uh, data itself. If it's hidden. Yeah, I mean, look at the figures in the paper and then... Yeah, but, but what is paper? Yeah, paper yeah. It's final, final outcome of research. And uh, yeah, we, we need data, we need to verify <laughs> all these data sets. I mean, so there are a lot of latent variables, right? Like around the actual data set, we're not gonna be able to get access to those, but we should not just ignore the papers that don't have, you know, attached code or attached data sets. Um, it is a case that we can pull, you know, results out of a paper um, and also try to use heuristics to understand the likelihood that their behavior is accurate, right? Um, so uh, one heuristic would be, you know, is this from a author that seems to have good papers? Um, is this published in a journal that seems to have good papers? Other heuristics include, you know, doing things like looking at whether or not they actually used any statistical tests, um, you know, uh, how thorough was their literature review and all these other uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I totally agree with John. And, and that's, um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of, I mean, I've written like a preliminary framework for this on, on another Trello board and I'll share it in the group, but yeah, it, it has the points that John made exactly like, you know, what, what context was it done in test tubes? Was it done in animals? Who were the first and last authors? What are their influence in the field and things like that. And, the idea is to tally up all of these points so that you get a, a good estimate of how, how good a paper is essentially. And that will be at the top of the return search. Okay, that's it, just saying. Okay, um, yes. Lucas, just before we uh, close it, because I don't know about you guys, but I'm a bit confused about like who it would be working on what. Like the vector space model, I think I have an idea of who's working on what, but like, has anyone, is anyone like working on the like entity extraction or like a uh, relation extraction? Actually, as far as I know, it's something that uh, it, we can uh, discuss on Slack further later on or tomorrow. Uh, but in general, I think we need to uh, talk uh, quite precisely on those things because they are they have been mentioned in uh, earlier talks uh, we have uh, entity uh, recognition done already by brandon but the question is uh, what uh, what about the entity like uh, uh, relation extraction because yeah, it's something that exactly. is, was mentioned i think also by john uh, in somewhere in in slack that i'm i'm correct john Sorry, uh, muted again. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, relation extraction is very important. Um, I think uh, there are two different things here. One is like ontology creation, which I think right now we're probably avoiding doing. We're using existing ontologies like Mesh and some of the other data sets that Slav is integrating. Um, so, uh, you know, different set of techniques is used for ontology learning versus just relation finding. Um, uh, I think that, you know, as a first pass, just doing the named entity recognition and using a couple of these other techniques like Brandon's doing is, um, is super helpful. Um, and once we've done a couple of uh, iterations of that, then we can look into some of the more sophisticated techniques around uh, relationship mining. Um, um, I, I little, little bit disagree. I think uh, we should keep all relations right now. Well, it can be, yeah, just MongoDB that we can query afterwards, but, but I think it's really important to, to do it right now, not to wait uh, after we will uh, do processing uh, of the whole stuff. Yeah, okay. I, I agree with that. I think like we should at least establish like, you know, like a shitty version first and then iteratively uh, improve each component. Like, if there's an issue with the named entity uh, recognition, if there's an issue with the entity linking, then we could just uh, make better modules with that. Okay, guys, I think that uh, two things are uh, takeaways, namely uh, the question of ranking. We can, uh, uh, we can uh, talk about it later on. Actually, now we can start talking about it uh, on Slack and on Trello, depending it's just a, a information exchange or a kind of a draft. 
And uh, actually, um, the last one where, where we've been talking now, namely uh, 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 radiation extraction. So those two things are a kind of takeaway for us, like now, and we can uh, keep uh, this discussion going on tomorrow. Okay. Because we are run off, uh, out of time. Uh, sorry for the, this authoritarian kind of of leading this discussion. Um, but yeah. Okay, so uh, guys, thanks a lot. Uh, and I schedule the, na the next uh, the next session at the same time tomorrow. Uh, I think that for the most of us, it will be okay. And once again, uh, sorry for this kind of authoritarian uh, moderation, uh, but yeah. <laughs> it's greatly appreciated, Vikash, don't worry. No, no, but, uh, it's quite shitty to, to cut off uh, all of you and because I, I, I feel you want to, you have so much to, to like uh, concerns or ideas or, or, or uh, any uh, fears to express about different aspects uh, and so much uh, information to share, but sorry, otherwise uh, it, it won't work uh, for everyone. So thanks a lot once again and we see us tomorrow. Have a okay, nice guys. day, have a nice evening, morning, whatever. Well, I'll be up for your pizza, but you're not cold. Thank you. Bye. Bye, bye. Thank you, guys. See you.